Welcome to the Autistic Delicatessen. What you eat, what you drink, is your story. So when you eat with awareness, you want to eat what you already think you are. When they're looking at history, looking at our food, there's just so much to bring people together. Come get this love. Come get this love. Today's guest is Alex Orozco, a.k.a. The Hood Foodie. The Hood Foodie explores various local businesses that larger food networks tend to miss out on, such as documenting the owners and their passionate dreams on what they show for the food community. It also helps to promote smaller businesses and to appreciate what these businesses can bring to the local communities. Alex of the Hood Foodie, welcome to the Autistic Delicatessen. Yo, fam, uh, super excited. Uh, I'm just tripping out how, you know, people from all over the world, you know, got, you know, how did you guys come across the Hood Foodie? But because I'm telling you, it's an honor for me to be on your podcast. Uh, it does hit different because as you guys know, you know, my baby boy, you know, little Hood Foodie, uh, he's uh, high functioning autistic. So you guys don't understand the impact that you guys have on me because me as a, as a dad, you know, having a, you know, uh, an autistic uh, child, not knowing where his future is going to lead once, you know, once he has to fend for yourself. Before I forget, I want you guys to know that you guys give me hope. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, we really appreciate that. Um, Alex, man, cause we, we are definitely influenced by seeing your videos and seeing how you go out to like mom and pop shots around hoods across the country, hopefully internationally, like, you know, um, but um, I just want to know what was the first like mom and pop restaurant that you connected with, like um, in your hood where you're from in California? <laughs> you know, it's so funny because a lot of people think that I, you know, I got, you know, that I'm put together, but I don't, you know, I have my disabilities. I have my obstacles. I have my challenges. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I have a bad memory. Like I, I can't, I don't remember what I did yesterday. You know, my, my wife, I don't know if she, she grasps it, but I tell her like, babe, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know how much, you know, she believes of that, but I could only tell you that right now I'm going off of frequency, like, cause this is definitely, a, I feel like a higher power type of stuff. The journey tells me that it all started in Lenchitas, in my hood of Pacoima. So that was, that was kind of like the first, you know, first mom and pop shop that I feel we visited that kind of gave us, gave us that exposure that would only lead to what's happening now. I mean, you know, once it started, it hasn't stopped. It just keeps, keep, keeps getting bigger and bigger, uh, regardless of, you know, us being knocked down through you know, I stopped drinking at 36 years old. I started working on myself, took medications. Everything in that box hit me. I'm talking about depression. I was suicidal. Ended up in a 5152 hold. And then after that, you know, just I didn't understand. You know, they kept feeding me medication, and that was what was causing it. So as I, as soon as I left, you know, uh, Mission Community Hospital in the in the hood of Panorama City, um, I stopped taking meds and I was depressed for a while until until the hood footy found me. I wasn't looking for the hood footy. Like the hood footy found me. But I'll, we'll, we'll definitely get into deeper details in the story, you know, if you guys would like. Sure, no problem. And that definitely is something that, you know, good thing that you were able to get out of it and still process it because that's really like a lot of heavy stuff to get you towards like, the hood foodie really finding you. And that's one of been the, the more intriguing stories about like looking up your bio as well as seeing you in past interviews with other people. No, no, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's definitely been a ride, you know. Uh, you know, and I, I I honestly think it stems from you know me losing my parents out of high school. You know, uh I I always I always knew that there was something off about me. So with the addition of losing my parents you know, right out of high school when I think it was, you know, basically like 
getting ready for the world, you know, uh, I, I, I lose basically the people that are supposed to guide me. And I was the last soul for so many years. You know, I, I drank a lot. You know, alcohol played a huge role in my household. It, it actually took my dad out. Like, that's the reason why my dad passed away, because of alcoholism. So I knew that I needed to break that chain, because if not, the one, you know, my, my children could possibly, you know, have that, you know, in, in, you know, in their environment. And I, I didn't want that. I, 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 just, I just got tired of feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, that's def- and that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that as well. And it also, that hits me as well, because I know various people, even family that have um, been involved with alcohol or heavy drinking or alcoholism. And, <laughs> and he's getting me a little bit teary as well. <laughs> I'm just, it's just one of those things when you hear that and you hear how it ends, ends up with some people and you're just like, Oh, crap kind of thing but with other people like you you manage to get out of it there for me that gives some some hope in that and I noticed that you bring a a, a big upbeat attitude in your um hood foodie I need to stop thinking food hoodie because I can get it the wrong way around <laughs> uh, your okay, hood, okay. <laughs> but your hood foodie uh, content is just um so I love the upbeat attitude and with the food and you just show that you love the food and you love it so much and it's just like I love that we don't see much of that in food stuff a lot of people like to criticize and stuff but it's like you forget you think you already criticize so much you forget about the simplistic thing of loving the food it's like me with tea I do tea blog and i've reviewed and criticized some stuff but i have to remind myself that the simple pleasure is just just loving the drink and that's that's all that matters at the end of the day you know you know for me i just you know like i said it found me and i never knew a passion i never knew a love until you know this found me and like i said i trip out how i got into the foodie world because here's here's a kicker for you Growing up, I was such a picky eater, and I don't know how to cook, but apparently I have a personality. And with it, you know, uh, we've been able to showcase so many, you know, so many mom and pop shops. Uh, but one thing, I, one thing I don't do is that I don't critique, I don't rate, because I don't feel like I have that voice. Like I said, I don't, I, growing up, I was such a picky eater, and I don't know how to cook. Who would I be if I, you know, if I would critique or, you know, rate other people's food, uh, you know, only in the understanding that not, you know, everybody, everybody doesn't have the same palate. You know, you might, you might like something that I don't and vice versa. You know, so for, for me, my platform, even when I hand out stickers, it's basically like, this is not a certification. This is not me approving the restaurant. This, this sticker indicates that I'm here to show love and support and bring a spotlight to the business. What happens after, that's that's all, you know, that's all the higher power, basically. And that's really an interesting take, though, because it's more of like, in a sense, like a promotion more than like a cosign, you know, like, you know how in hip hop, there's like a cosign and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like, you yeah. know, that, that's what it is, though. And honestly, Alex, like one of the videos that in particular I liked was like when you were at this food truck, and there was this taco that had like some ribs on it, and it looked very interesting. It was like, was it for something very Mexican, like one of your stops? So was it was it a uh, asadero uh, el infierno, which they're, they're they're basically the home of the rib taco? Yes, that one. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, that 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 will cause attention. I mean, basically, what they do is that they you know they give you a tortilla, and you know, I mean, they they cut it up, but you know, since you know, since your boy's the hood foodie, they, they give me the whole rib, you know, so because they know I'm about to ch- put them up. So visually, I mean, obviously, you know, w- when it comes to for a dish to be made, it's like first is visually for some people, you know. So if you visually like it, it's one thing. But then once you bite into that rib, oh, man, it's 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 the flavor it's just, it's everything, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Do, if you ever come down to my hood, I'll definitely take you, man, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll definitely be interesting to like try out. And I'm sure, like, only like 
like them being from Scotland would actually that would be something different for them to try out some like good like Mexican type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I do like some Mexican food and I'd like to see what goes down in like well, the hood and all that. What? I'm super excited. I'm super excited because you know I, I will be sharing this with my familia, which you know, everybody's here's my familia. Uh I want I want my familia to know who you guys are, where you guys from. Because for me, like I said, like for for people to know me outside of like Los Angeles, uh it's it's I trip out. I'm like, damn, like how far are we getting, man? Cause it's like, you know, familia, please introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Larnell. I'm the host and producer of the Autistic Dog Attested, and I'm from Florida. I live in Lutz, which is around Tampa, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I'm Onikage. I am also the co-host and producer of the Autistic Dog Tessin, and I'm also a um, blogger of Land of Infusion, and I also am in charge of the blog slash podcast slash YouTube series Autish, which is all about talking about autism and such so yeah <laughs> i'm from scotland <laughs> how crazy is that like i just want to know how did you guys come across me like for me it's very intriguing i mean I, I i love it like i said it hits home too how did you guys come across me like um well really for me like i came across you from um um i think it was from the guy that did like the uh, mestizo um mestizo coffee you know you were on one of his Yes, yes, I did, did, did you know, live with him. Yes, yes, I remember that. And that's how I found out about your stuff. And I thought, oh, this guy seems interesting. Oh, the hood's foodie. Oh, <laughs> he's checking out different mom and pop shops in the hood. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting take to look at that because, you know, like when we call like mom and pop shops hitting gems, but there really hasn't been any food person to really go out to the hoods because you recently went out to Chicago to really look at the different restaurants in the hoods. We're not just talking about like the suburbs or more of the upscale areas. We're talking about the hoods, the hoods, the hoods, you know? So yeah, I'm sure I mean, you will find, I'm sure you will find some good places even in Florida around like the hoods of <laughs> South Florida, around the hoods of Tampa. So yeah. Oh no, no. Uh, you know, like I said, this definitely fell into my lap. Uh, I do feel that it's God's plan because once the hood footy found me, it hasn't stopped. And I've been doing it for the past six, seven years. And I feel in my heart that this year we're about to go worldwide. Like I'm already thinking of like, how can I go, in, you know, worldwide? And I'm already, you know, I, I, uh, I, you know, I started working against, you know, to create funds to, you know, start maybe like, I'm not going to say like every week, but I'm going to try as much as I can to, you know, maybe one week hit up New York, one week hit up uh, Florida, one week uh, hit up Holland. Like you know, it's, it's something that comes to me naturally. Like I don't even, I'm not even trying over here. Like it just, it, you know, a little, a little voice gets in my head and then we, we manifest it to life. Like it's so crazy because, you know, when I was, you know, before this happened, I'm not going to lie to you. I was in a very dark place where, you know, I didn't even believe in myself, you know? And that's where the transition where like, I, you know, at 36, I, I got, I got tired of, of, of uh, feeling sorry for myself. I stopped drinking. And then, you know, I, I felt like that's when I started loving myself, like learning to, unfortunately, I had to hit that rock bottom. And then after that rock bottom, that's when, you know, like you said, you know, I, I, I feel like I was trying to get away from what I had just experienced. And I was like, you know, social media was hitting hard, like fashion, you know, uh, uh, lifestyle food and i was like wait a minute i have a camera i have a phone i can take pictures of all these places and and it just so happens that i took i was starting to take places in my hood the 818 like lechitas in pocoima carrillos in san fernando and all these little mom and pop shops not knowing where the journey was going to lead us then i get kicked out to la the mecca of the foodie world and then next you know it's like you know I blow up the first restaurant that I that I stop at. Uh, we start certifying re uh, uh, restaurants, creating dishes with the people I was helping support. Uh, McDonald's reached out to us at three thousand followings, and I don't know if you guys have seen who we who we've been working with, but we're working with the biggest brands in the world. Podcast interviews from a, a very very young uh, young following, where I've been very transparent and not even knowing the impact that I was doing. When speaking about my mental health that I had just experienced, 
speaking about my, you know, my child with autism that, you know, even though he has autism, he's dreaming as big as his dad. Like he's animating, he wants to work for Nickelodeon. Like, I don't even know how I'm inspiring him, but I'm, I'm doing it, you know, to diabetes, the elephant in the room in the foodie world. Uh, been in shows with Gordon Ramsay, hung out with Darwin Sanchez, ran into Andrew Zimmer uh, at Netflix when I used to work there and he knew me. I've gone to people's homes where like the grandma's cooking to mansion parties with some of the biggest chefs in the world. And like I, I tell you guys, I don't even know how I got into this, but it's definitely a calling. Yeah. And it's interesting with Gordon Ramsay because I've seen him on Kitchen Nightmares and some of his <laughs> kitchen, but more like Kitchen Nightmares. I like that more and all that stuff and some of his other stuff, you know, but also like only knows about like Gordon Ramsay since they're in the UK too as well and knows about Hell's Kitchen and all that stuff. So they're a fan. No, no, he's uh, definitely worldwide. Uh, you know, I did a, uh, what was it? A 24 hour in help to bag or something like that. One of his, uh, you know, renovation uh, restaurants, uh, we did it at Endeer's. And obviously, you know, I couldn't take care, you know, he, he was very, the, the staff was very like, you know, making sure that we didn't take any video or footage. But I'll tell you one thing, Gordon Rhett came up to me and I don't know how much he knew about me, but he said, I want to thank you for everything that you do. What he meant by that, I don't know. I could only, you know, I could only assume that he does see me, he does watch me and, and he does, you know, he, he, he basically, that was his, his you know, him giving me his, you know, his approval type of thing. Uh, and, and I gotta say that like, I'm, I'm one of the few people, well, no, I, I'm not gonna say few because he's been following a lot recently, but I can say that Gordon Ramsay follows me. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely bragging rights right there, but that's just <laughs> awesome. And also, it's how we have, I noticed when I was um, re, um, researching your content, how you present yourself. That's probably why you seem so approachable. I mean, <laughs> your content looks so professional and your videos, when you just show the food and that, you're having fun and you're just showing everything as is and it's natural and it's it's better than what most of the big network food <laughs> networks do. You do something that what they don't it's like being authentic and i highly respect that with your content i just find it a lot of fun it's awesome as well you know what it is is that i think a lot of people when they get into social media they have a plan you know and i never had a plan i you know like i said you got you know my family found me about six seven years ago when i didn't believe in myself so you guys have as much credit as my success as anything, because this is where I'm gonna go at. You guys found me when I didn't believe in myself to now possibly one of the biggest foodies in LA and about to launch a Hood Foodie World Tour. That's how much of an impact that you guys have on me. But going back to your question, I never had to try it. I've, I've always done it. I, 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 you know, one of my models is I go, there's three tiers, right? There's either it feels right, it feels iffy, or it doesn't feel right at all. I only operate by one, and that's when it feels right. So the day that I feel that I'm not having fun with this, then that's the day that I'm going to hang up the gloves because that's all I'm doing. I'm just, you're getting me. Like, you, you, the dancing, you know, the, the lives, like, it doesn't change. Like, you get, this is who you get. If, I, if we ever meet in person, I don't change. And I think, that's, I think that's what happens. Yeah, I get it a lot where, like, it's relatable. You know, a lot of people, you know, that's why with, with, my, my, with my content, I want to make sure that people understand that, yes, you know, we're working with McDonald's, Carl's Jr., Panda Express, Remy Martin, but I also, I also get depressed. I'm also human. I also have my bad days. You know, you got, you got to give people realness. I mean, at least that's what I've understood because, like I said, I don't know, for, for many years, I didn't know what I was doing. 
what what this whole with the hood, hood footy thing like i didn't know okay well i found a passion like am i supposed to make it like a career or, i mean you know what why why can't i you know like there's so many people out there you know doing what they do and you know for the love of it why can't i you know something that comes so naturally to me you know after seven years with no questions asked i think it's time for me you know to step it up and i'm not gonna lie to you guys like it's a trip like everything became so came came so organic like even from like the hood food right when we when we when we when we thought about the hood footy name like we never thought of like the impact that it would do as far as the connection where it's like the hood footy and we're visiting mom and pop shops in the hood i never thought i never saw that it, it just happened you know when when it comes to like the logo right one day i had a meeting and they're like okay well you got the name do you have a do you have a face for your brand and all that same day, that same day, I go home and I'm playing with Facebook filters. And there's one that does, you know, it was a cartoon. And all I had to do is like, and the brand was created, you know, to now, to now, I'm happy to say that I, we are looking into creating an S corporation. Trip out on that. Like I'm, you know, I'm, 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 you know, we're, I'm driving around with my wife after the meeting with the lawyer, and it's like, babe, like, where, where did the, all this, like, now we're, we're putting together an S corporation, like that is huge, like, where did it all come? But I get it, I understand it. It's, it, it seems like, like you said, you know, like it, it's, I try to keep my channel with nothing of positivity. Because I feel that, you know, all the negativity, there's already enough media putting it out there. I just want, I just want, well, I didn't know I wanted this, but I hear it all the time where people will, will tell me, like, every time I see your page, it gives me hope. It inspires me. It, 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 it makes me realize to never stop. And for, for, people, to, for people to use those words, those are not just lightly words. Those are some heavy words that people can give to you. And I, I hope they understand that it means the world to me. Because remember, I didn't even believe, I, I didn't believe in myself until you guys found me. Wow. We really definitely appreciate that. In terms of drinks and food, do you have like a favorite drink? or favorite food like out of like all the like mom and pop shops you've been to so far in both LA as well as Chicago like um do you have a favorite you know and feel free to plug the businesses too again if you want to I don't I don't like to kind of like put people at like certain levels but I, what I will tell you is that a lot of these places that I visit that you know and I only visit the people that at this Point. like there's so many people reaching out that i only re that i only respond to the people that the businesses that that you know hit me up directly but it seems like all these places that i stop at the people make the food with love because that's what i taste you know as far as like you know my, my favorite cuisine i definitely have to go with you know a mexican you know mexican that's nostalgia to me that's what i grew up with you know caldito de res uh you know a good taco a good burrito uh you know just things like that but i also like th you know thai food i like you know that spiciness the, the sweetness uh uh but man there's there's so many there's so many dishes that i've, I've tasted that are so yummy from man from like, like you said like deep dish pizza in chicago or like you know just there's there's endless endless of dishes that are my favorites and and like I said for me it's I don't I don't I feel like you know because people were like oh yeah you know what's the best birria like this one this one I'm like well you know to me I feel like everybody makes the birria a certain way everybody adds their own sazon maybe you know everybody adds their own kick to it so for me it's it's you know. It with the determination is, do they put the love into it? That's those, those are my favorite dishes. When people 
when, no, no, I'm sorry. When, when you can taste the love of the dishes that people prepare for you, those are my favorite dishes. And on that note, Alex, we would like to thank you for being a guest on the Autistic Dog Contestant and really like um, showing our audience, you know, where like um, good food comes from in the hoods and hopefully they can check out these places. And really, we wish much of the best of success for you as well as the hood foodie. Definitely. Trust me, I'm going to be visiting, you know, Holland. I'm going to be visiting Florida. Like this year, we're, we're taking the brand worldwide. So this is not the last time you see of me. So in hopes that, you know, we get to meet in person or, or hey, if you guys come down to, you know, the, you know, our hood of LA and, you know, for some beach action, for some taco, the capital of the taco world. I mean, you guys are welcome anytime, fam. Yeah, thank awesome. you so much for that. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> well, we thank you for watching this episode of the Autistic Delicatessen. If you want to know anything more about our show, as well as our podcast, please go on to theampliverse.com slash the dash autistic dash delicatessen. And in there, you'll find our podcast and our YouTube series, both of which have different sets of episodes, so you have all the content. And if you're interested in more content, feel free to subscribe for future episodes. Until next time. What you eat and what you drink is your story.